how do you manage that in, in a distributed environment when everybody is not necessarily nearby for you to work on the machine, to provide them support? It was just a, a big challenge that remote workers were facing and those IT teams looking to support those employees in that environment. Hey, what's up? This is Jamal Abbott. Thanks for tuning in. Here to talk to you today about cybersecurity for remote environments. So we're in part three of our four part series covering cybersecurity awareness. And we're looking at remote workers and how these individuals can be protected as well as the organizations that are supporting remote workers. For today's episode, we're gonna take a look at what's going on with remote workers, really how we got here. Next after that, we'll be looking at some of the risks that remote workers face when dealing with that type of environment away from a corporate office where most of the protections and the strategies are in place. And then finally, we'll look at some of the best practices that can be implemented to secure remote workers and also protect the organizations that support this staff. Let's go back in time for just a little bit. And for some of us, this wasn't all that long ago when we were dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we know with that pandemic that caused a lot of confusion and a lot of concerns about how we were going to operate in an environment where governments all around the world were locking down individuals and we were trying to figure out how to operate in that new reality. So leading up to the, the pandemic, there had been a push already for options to work remotely from anywhere. So from home, from the coffee shop to, you know, whatever the place is, that trend was on its way. And the pandemic, for the most part, accelerated that move to open up remote work for employees. With that, we made it through, we figured it out. And because of the technology that we currently had in place, it made it a lot easy for those organizations that were already on that path of remote work and then for some that were challenged with trying to figure out what tools and what options they had with that, they managed to work through those struggles and get through that period of lockdown. As we opened back up and we started to return to the office, that really opened the door to consider remote work as a viable option for some as a full-time strategy. And then for others that prefer to have their workers stay in the office, you know, that was a strategy as well too. So you have some corporate environments, some organizations now considering how do you support hybrid workers in a hybrid work environment where you have some folks that will work out of the office for a couple of days out of the week and then also return to the office and then do the same jobs and same task, but in, in person. So that's where we're at with remote work today. It's, it's definitely a viable option as Internet connectivity has been strong. Access to technology has been great. And it's given options for those workers to do the work they do, but from anywhere. What's interesting about remote work at this scale is for some organizations realizing that they had a lot more options uh, at their disposal. So no longer were they limited to looking for skilled employees in a particular ge geographic area, but they can actually widen that talent pool to pull from folks that were maybe in a different part of the country or maybe in a different country altogether. So now you're able to find the best candidate for the job and then plug them into your organization. So that brings up a, a challenge now with trying to figure out how to integrate these employees and give them the same tools that the, the people that had these tools in the office. So what did they do to try to figure this out? Well, it was a trial by error for some, and then they figured it out along the way to understand that those folks that were outside of the office were seeing the same level of productivity and sometimes higher, depending upon the organization and the job at hand, sometimes higher productivity gains compared to those folks that were actually in the office. And this led to cost savings, not only with office space, but you were able to give employees the, the tools necessary to get the job done, but with less overhead 
and less administrative expenses tied to that. Now this isn't without its challenges and this actually opened up a whole new can of worms that weren't previously considered when you were working in the office. In the office, you had all of the security, all of the protections in place, all of the policies, all under one roof. So for those workers that were attached to the corporate network, the policies were there and there was no problem enforcing those things. With remote workers, how do you enforce those same policies with protecting your data, to ensuring that the actual endpoints that those employees are using are safe, all without being connected directly to the corporate network. There's some things that we'll touch on a little bit like VPNs and then having dedicated endpoint protection on those devices. But you know, how do you manage that in, in a distributed environment when everybody is not necessarily nearby for you to work on the machine, to provide them support. It was just a, a big challenge that remote workers were, were facing and those IT teams looking to support those employees in that environment. So let's look at some of the risks involved with supporting remote employees. For one, you have to consider the personal devices that may be attempting to access corporate resources. Are those systems patched? Two, are they secure? Do they have the proper endpoint security, the malware protection, all those things? If you're one of those organizations that said, hey, we'll figure it out later, we just need to get online and just get it going. At some point, you'll have to address that big security gap, which is, you know, are those end devices protected? The other thing to consider for risk when it comes to remote workers and some of these personal devices is that data that they're working with protected, is it backed up? Let's just say that Joe's at a coffee shop and is doing some work and takes off. But the only problem is he left his laptop behind at the shop. He comes back and then soon realizes that his stuff is gone as well as all of that corporate data that was on his laptop. Could you prevent something like that from happening again? And for the sake of this conversation, let's just say that Joe was able to find the laptop but now is back home doing his work and his network is unsecured. Worse off, let's just pretend that Joe is actually borrowing his neighbor's Wi-Fi, which is unsecured, and he's using that to process sensitive information related to your organization. So that in itself is a, it's a huge risk, and it's something that we can't take on. We looked at some of the risks involved with working from home and from other places outside of the corporate office. Now let's, let's take a look at some of the best practices that can be utilized to protect these remote workers. And one of the first things that can be done to protect remote workers is really establishing a policy for protecting these devices that are away from the corporate network. Policies like ensuring that these end devices stay up to date, have the proper patches, and then a basic level of security in order to protect these devices from falling into the wrong hands like encryption or just to protect these uh, endpoints from getting exposed to different types of attacks when away from the corporate network. Another step to protect employees is to encourage the use of strong encrypted wireless networks. So in showing those employees the steps that are needed to set a password and set encryption on the Wi-Fi networks to ensure that the wrong people aren't getting access to these types of networks. For Joe, letting him know that he shouldn't be using his neighbor's Wi-Fi and to set up his own private Wi-Fi connection with security enabled. So that way, not anybody can jump onto his network, nor is he at the mercy of somebody else that may be looking at some of his activities and behaviors that he's doing on behalf of his organization. An option that has been around for quite some time is the use of VPNs. A VPN is a virtual private network, which allows you to install software on an end device, which allows you to connect back to a corporate network. And then that traffic that passes over that virtual private network is encrypted and is unable to be accessed by anybody that may attempt to try to look at that connection. One of the interesting things that has come about here recently is the use of desktop as a service. And with this, we're talking about a secure, virtualized desktop environment where the actual computing power in itself is away from the end user clients 
and pushed into a cloud environment where it's centrally managed and centrally monitored to ensure that compliance, security, and other measures are in place to protect corporate data and actual end user accounts. With this strategy, you would no longer have to worry about managing individual computers and laptops, but are now able to apply these policies from like a one-stop shop and then be able to monitor and manage your corporate resources without the hassle of being next to those individual end devices. So this is really one of the best types of solutions that has come around that supports remote workers, but also gives them the resources needed to be able to get their jobs done remotely using the devices that they work best with. And as long as they have that connection to the internet and access to the uh, virtual desktop environment, those users are able to get the jobs done just like if they were actually in the office. Aside from virtual desktop environments, making sure that the data is safely backed up, which you can find in a desktop as a service type of platform, making sure that data is backed up, secured and protected just in case if something goes wrong. If we go back to the example again with Joe leaving his laptop at the coffee shop, and let's just say that laptop wasn't recovered, if he's using a desktop as a service application, he would not have to worry about the data coming up missing and falling in the wrong hands because that data wasn't actually stored on his laptop in itself. Last and certainly not least is ensuring that employees have the knowledge and the tools available to them to protect themselves in these remote environments. We cover this a little bit in previous episodes, but it's just given them the, the tools, the knowledge, and the understanding that cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility and it all falls on all of us to protect ourselves, to ensure that we're not clicking on the links that we aren't too sure of, and making sure that we safeguard the data that we're entrusted with for our organization as well as for the customers that we are supporting. As we wrap up this episode, we'll quickly summarize what we learned here today, which first started off with the transition to remote work, how this all came about brewing in the background as greater connectivity options have come about as well as better access to technology. With that, we also understand too that there's some increased risk when it comes to remote environments. And there's a lot more things that we have to consider when these workers are away from the corporate environments, away from the different policies and the procedures that we have in place to protect employees inside of the office. And with that, those policies have to extend out to remote workers and some of these best practices have to be put in place in order to keep your staff and your resources safe while they're out there doing their job away from the corporate office. If you have any questions about anything that we covered here today, you're more than welcome to contact me. Hit me up on social media at Jamal Abbott. You can also reach me at my website, jamalabbott.com forward slash contact, and would love to take your feedback from there as well too. Don't forget to check out the first two episodes where we cover the basics of cybersecurity awareness and securing your business network. And stay tuned for the next episode, which is gonna be the last in our four-part series of cybersecurity awareness. Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon.